Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are playing something totally different. It's uh, Wildermyth, or Wildermyth, but I think Wildermyth sounds better, so I'm going to go with that, because this is the first time I've said it out loud, and now I have no idea what to call it. So, Wildermyth it is. Uh, so, this game, it's got uh, XCOM-style tactical combat, and um, procedurally generated storytelling mechanisms. It's a lot of fun, so we're going to play it. So, new story. Uh, so this game was actually recommended by a couple of uh, my subscribers, uh, a couple of my backers, actually, uh, independently of each other, so I had to check it out, and I'm ruddy glad I did. So here, um, I did start a new profile, just to um, start fresh with, uh, with you guys. So, um, as you can see, there's only one campaign available to us, and it's the Age of Ulstrix, which is kind of the tutorial, basically. So, um a three-chapter story that is geared towards new players face off against the implacable Gorgon leader, Ulstrix. So, once we've completed this, uh, we get the option to do The Enduring War, uh, or Monarchs Under the Mountain, which are both story-driven things. They have, like, an actual uh, overarching narrative that's been, you know, tailor-made for these campaigns. Um, and then there's also a three-chapter and a five-chapter, sort of just entirely randomly generated campaign, and a legacy three-chapter. Legacy is basically um, once you've had characters uh, either sort of die or you completed, um, you know, a, a campaign with some of your characters or whatever, they're added to your legacy. And you can then bring those sort of, like, heroes of myth into uh, further campaigns, which is really fun. So you can have recurring characters, uh, which is really fun. And legacy, the idea of that is that you have those with, with all of their sort of, um, you know, all the benefits that they gathered over the course of the campaign, or at least some of them. Can, uh, can join you for later campaigns, which is really fun. But uh, anyway, we don't need to talk about like New Game Plus. We haven't even I haven't even played the game with you guys yet, so let's just get to it. So we're going to play the uh, tutorial campaign, which honestly doesn't feel like a tutorial, but I am going to up the difficulty to Tragic Hero. Adventurer is the default. I'm going to go Tragic Hero. The world is brutal. Combat unforgiving. Few survived unscathed, which is great, because I don't want people to necessarily survive. Um, I want people to, you know, have a limb missing by the end of it. I want people to... Um, yeah, I want the story to develop, basically, because that's the strength of this game. It's it's the randomly generated story is wonderful. So, uh, the map seed, um, I'm going to do, um, I don't know, 555. Uh, uh, five, five. Why? I don't know. It's just, it's just so it's easy to remember, and it's easy for you guys to copy if you want to play along at home. Sound good? Brilliant. Uh, so, there is mod support as well with Steam Workshop, and um, there is an editor in the game that lets you... Um, build uh, different stories and things, which uh, I haven't actually played about with yet, but I don't know. It might be great, might be rubbish, but either way, I'm sure people who make mods uh, will know how to deal with it. So, next. So here, um, so Future Warrior, Future Hunter, and Future Mystic. This is the race, you know, the classes that they will end up having once we've got through the their initial, um, you know, bit of story, basically. And the text underneath, bookish peacekeeper, political romantic, and bookish loner, those are going to uh, sort of tailor the events um, to those things. So a lot of the events will play out differently depending on the sort of people that are in those events, which is where you get the really interesting sort of um, uh, randomly generated storytelling stuff happening, which is really fun. So, uh, Man, uh, Roshjin, and Glenora. Roshjin? Roshjin, Marn, and Glenora. I think, yeah, those are good enough names. Let's do it. So, uh, oh yes, here, this is another important thing. This is another difficulty setting, essentially. This is how you choose how advanced the enemies are, essentially. We're just going to keep it zero, because we're starting from scratch. Um, also, you can re-roll these guys, randomize them separately, whatever you like. So, let's start. And here's the world map. And then here's an event. So, uh, this book, there's room in it for another story. It's cold. I'm stuck here. It's the book talking. Likely none will ever read my part. Right, then this must be the beginning. Here, in our yondering country, something in the woods is very strange. Just shout out for the, the art department of this game. Very small crew, actually, this game. Um, it seems to be a family-run operation, but it's... Because, uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, Austins. It actually tells you who wrote each event, uh, which I think is really fun, because it means when the, you know, with the full mod support, as people start adding more stuff, you can see exactly where that... Uh, um, you know, the bits of story came from, which I think is wonderful. I think that's a really nice touch 
Um, so you can see who is who is generating what bits of story. But anyway, uh, the, the way it's it's displayed, I think, is just gorgeous. Uh, it's all sort of comic book strip, um, and it all feels very handmade. It feels like a scrapbook. Um, it just it feels so tactile. I really love the presentation. So anyway, next. Uh, concerned only with the depth and echo of his thoughts, a young man named Marm took the seasonal road to the town of Good Shovel. Everyone's life is their own private legend. I want to know I brought peace, even just to one person. Sure, the tale of Marm is mostly just patched cuts and fixed fences to this point. I'd love to do more, but... All right, no more useless thoughts. Morning's getting late, and I still have to drag Ro uh, Roshjin out his door. Hopefully he's wearing clothes this time, or... Smoke? Smoke! So, this, I really like this, uh, is, again, will sort of uh, help the randomly generated narrative stuff um, happen, which is really cool. So here, between... Um, uh, I've already forgotten his name. Marn, that's it. We've got him up here. So, uh, between Marn and Roshjin, we need to decide what their, uh, you know, relationship is, which I think is really cool. So, um, we can go with rivalry, friendship, or romance. Uh, I think every good story has a rivalry, uh, between a couple of friends. I've watched enough anime to know that everyone needs a rival, right? So we're gonna have a rival. So, uh, watch me worry, and he's fine. Or maybe not so fine. Ick. Hey, Roshjin, you here? Constructing mission. And here is the XCOM style combat. You don't need to tell me things. So uh, here you can see uh, green is one movement and that's a dash. So, you know, two action points like other things. Uh, objectives are, out, are up here. So put out fires is our first objective. And uh, our sort of actions, the things we can do are uh, listed at the bottom. But it's contextual so it'll only give you the options that you can do at that time. So if we move over here, look at that. We can extinguish this. Well, actually, some things are contextual. Some things it will actually tell you if it's specific to your uh, character. If it's specific to your character, then it'll list them. But if it's, like, specific to your tile, you know, that you're in, then it's contextual. But anyway, um, so let's extinguish that too. Helping out the town. Lovely. And now let's head over to the door. Okay, so a new turn. And we can just click the door to open it if you want. Huh? The fire didn't reach his house. Figures. Roshjin, are you hurt? Is there a reason the door's locked? Oh no. Mart will love this. I'm coming. Honestly, wish you uh, would have skipped. You look kind of... No time now. These things came. I'm not sure what they were. It caused chaos. This one behind the house won't leave. Grab something and hit it. <gasps> so, uh, here, where we pick uh, between our different weapon types, so uh, essentially spear, uh, axe, or uh, mace. Also, swords are a thing in this game, but uh, you don't get the choice of that early on. So, uh, what is nice is spears can reach an additional tile, um, the axes uh, remove armor, and maces have knockback. And then swords, are just they just do more damage than, than any of them, but don't have any additional effects. Um, at least I think so. I think they tend to do more damage. But anyway, they don't shred armor or anything. So, uh, I'm going to go with a... Ugh. Well, I don't know now. I mean, the only thing is it's called Good Shovel, but we don't have the option of a shovel, and that's bothering me. I kind of wish that we had a shovel to defend Good Shovel with, but alas, we don't. Um, <laughs> shovel is never an option. I'm just being silly. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the pickaxe. Uh, can I have the house if you die? If you don't mind me haunting you, all I can say is be ready before you go out there. And so here, um, it sort of represents the uh, the enemies as cards, but not when you're actually fighting them. It just sort of introduces um, foe cards with every encounter, uh, which is, I don't know, it kind of works. It's kind of neither here nor there. It's just odd that it actually says it's cards. Like, you could just say these foes are here, you know. But anyway, uh, so, row. Row, I'm pretty sure is... Um, because of, like, eggs um, row, because I think this thing is, uh, well, it's infected with something that I think is going to hatch out of it. So, uh, hooves thrown sloppily, uh, sloppily around beneath it. It runs staggering, bellowing its agony. Which is very sad, and we should definitely put it out of its misery. 
Um, so, I'll tell you what, you go right up front, go behind, you wait, and let's bust out. I don't see anything. So here you can see there is uh, more fire out here. We don't need to put it out or anything, it doesn't matter. Uh, and if you hover over these different um, sort of uh, decorations, I suppose, it tells you how much cover it is. So partial cover on either of these, so that'll do, I suppose. And uh, walling. So this is rather nice. So if you put two people next to each other, you can see the little icon on the ground, they are now walling. So like a spear wall kind of thing, you know. Uh, you can create a wall, and that will give one damage reduction uh, if you're walled. But it doesn't stack, so you can have a whole square of people together. They're still only going to, you know, have one damage off. So I guess it stop you from just, by default, being in a big pile. You can sort of run around in pairs or whatever you want. So it's kind of cool. You don't even have to do it at all, you know, but it's nice to. So, hit the rope. Also, you can turn the camera by holding right-click. Not completely. That's literally the range that it has, because, you know... The graphics are only pointing in one direction, but I love how it's presented. I really do. I really love how it's presented. So, let's go with... You know what? I'm just going to wait here. I'm going to wait for him to get a little closer. He's attacking a fireplace. What are you doing, mate? <laughs> Alright. Weirdo. Uh, so, we can reach him if we go here. And he's dead. Good job. So, Marn didn't get much done there. I think he's supposed to be the leader. How embarrassing. Oh dear. Okay, so, Marn is now a Greenhorn Warrior. In other words, he's level 1 now. He's actually a warrior now, rather than just like a... like a nothing class. Which uh, they both were there. So, uh, right, warriors like Marn are, are built hardy, enduring, with a natural aptitude for battle. They develop powerful techniques for close combat. So, uh, you get random choices each level up, which I think is really fun. Um, which I really like. And especially with legacy characters, um, you get to pick a few to start with uh, when you recruit them, which I think is really fun, because it it means that you can basically make it so the most sort of powerful abilities you can carry over and keep them forever. And you can slowly really, like, tailor-make your perfect uh, guy over the course of several campaigns. Uh, or you just pick a bunch randomly every time they level up, and you usually end up with something pretty good anyway, because none of these are terrible. So, Raider, as a swift action, once per turn, Marn can start a fire in an empty tile or break a piece of adjacent scenery, which can be useful, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one, I think. Engage, as a swift action, which is like a bonus action, but you only get one bonus action per turn, and then after that it counts as a normal action, which then does use up a turn. It does, actually it ends your turn if you do a second one of those actions. So, you can do three actions, provided you only do the one swift action in a turn, and then two other things. Cool. I'm glad that was very clear. So anyway, as a swift action, Marn engages another creature, forcing it to attack him. Marn must stay in range and maintain a clear line of sight, plus one armor per engaged foe. So basically, it's like a taunt uh, engage. Uh, blood rage, infuriated by wounds, Marn deals plus one damage for every two health he is missing. Uh, I don't massively like any of these, but I guess I'm going to go with Engage. Uh, so, hunters like Roshjin thrive in the wild, surviving through stealth and peerless archery. They master their surroundings and bring down large quarry. So, Rogue. Every time Roshjin kills an enemy, he enters Grey Plane for free. Grey Plane is stealth mode, basically. Uh, ambush. Roshjin draws back, ready to loose an attack upon an enemy who enters the threatened strip of tiles. If the shot is not sprung, Roshjin releases the attack at the beginning of his next turn. Uh, that's Overwatch, essentially. Or Quelling Moss, which I really like, actually. Roshjin's physical attacks now apply poison, which is very cool. Uh, as a single action, he can throw a bottle of poison that applies one poison to all units in an area. So he basically gets a poison grenade, and just anything he shoots at will will get poisoned, which is really cool. So I'll do Quelling Moss. I think that's really good. Uh, warding. Warding is basically armor, but for magic. Uh, so you can see Marn has one warding and one um, uh, armor. You see, just the tiny little icons. If you're look, watching this on a phone... Um, it might be a little tough to see it, frankly. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. So, uh, yeah, that's magic, like damage negation, and then physical damage negation. But armor rewarding can be sundered. It can be removed. So, let's go with... Uh, let's go to Rose Jin, so they both have one uh, warding. Cool. So, well, not how I expected the day to go, but I think we're both heroes. Glenormous... Glenora must already be waiting for us. It's not easy to say, but we should both go. 
Now? After that shadowy ruin? What about my home? The fire's out. The thing is dead. The other townsfolk will do what needs doing. And I'm... worried. Why was Glenora so intent on meeting us there? That old black tower? Legend says the ancient places were often built to keep down demons. Now that you mention it, the tracks do lead that way. Oh, Glenora, shut yourself, shutting yourself away. Now no one's there when you need them. So, now we get to pick uh, rivalry, friendship, or romance. So, uh, I think go f with friendship for this one. We have a couple of rivals, we have a friendship. Actually, you know what? Let's go with the romance. I think it's always, uh, I think it's always good to have a romance in a story, right? Let's go with the romance. You've always been a little fond of Glenora, right? You know what it is? No matter where she goes, things happen. So it's just... We tend to have adventures. And back to the world map. So, here we can see that uh, this is where the objective is. Uh, so first though, we have to scout. So these... Actually, there's quite a few areas around. They're all mountains, which is very upsetting. Uh, mountains you can't pass into. You can't go to mountains. They're always just a, a... Like a blank tile, essentially. Where there's nothing in it and you can't do anything with it. Um, just randomizes the routes through the map, basically. So, uh, for, oh, and um, this uh, lovely pattern is just, it's not loaded in, essentially. It's just not part of this chapter. So it's just completely inexplorable. And as we go from chapter to chapter, more of this sort of cool cloud pattern will get replaced with more explorable terrain. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of cool how it unfolds, you know, a little bit at a time. So, scouting. So first off, this area, you can see we can travel to this one, to the uh, uh, Bitter Rautum foothills. But we need to scout it before we can do anything. We don't know what's there yet. And here, you can pick who goes on the mission. And uh, obviously, Glenora can't, because she's in the tower in that area currently. And it says how many days away they are from that area. So it's going to take 14 days to get to that tile, and another 11 days to complete it. The 14 days is an average of the people traveling to it. So you've got faster characters and slower characters. It takes the average for uh, for travelling. So, let's go. Which I kind of like. I'm glad that it's not just you go as slow as the slowest person. Because it would make speed too important a thing for like everyone. You'd want to spread that out around everybody. It'd eh, be annoying. So, the previous night, the tower where Glenora had chosen to meet was a place she often used to escape to as a girl. She knew its rooms and floors so well. She could survive being chased through them. <clears throat> but they were a bit dusty. And now I wait, I suppose. <coughs> Until that beast breaks through. <coughs> she has quite a manly cough. It's fine. Uh, you're not so bad, are you, beast? At least you don't tell jokes. Gruff? <laughs> Schlurk? That's, that's a Gorgon knock-knock joke. Who's there? Um, the tower had outlived generations. It seemed ill at rest, angry at the seasons which had so mercilessly whittled away its glory. But, as the old will tell you, in dusty shadows, shy things long go overlooked. That book. Why am I never... Are you wondering why I'm talking to myself, beast? I'm also wondering... The book felt heavier than its splendor, uh, slender spine suggested. Wilder myth, or perhaps wilder myth, who knows. Who knows, it's a mystery, guys. Some say it's lost time. Um, it was full of strange stories, the folklore of folk long forgotten. The candlelight leaping struck no significant bell. It was the weird story of a child watching candlelight against the ceiling and wishing herself through it to a far realm without grown-ups. Chant of the Soil? Lacked any satisfying action. It was told through the mind of a blind deaf slave. She learned the humming, uh, scented song of the earth she moved, and so avoided slaying worms with her shovel. The Good Shovel Dancer. I remember Good Shovel. We were just there. Uh, claimed there was once a dan- uh, one Claimed there once danced a man in so many spinning circles that he stopped moving. And everything else began to turn instead. Glenora reached the last word of the final tall tale. A few blank pages were left. 
this book. There's room in it for another story. It's cold. I'm stuck here. Right. Then this must be the beginning. Here, in our yonder country, Glenora wrote, not sure why, but finding words ready. Omens had taken shape in the fabric of the land. There, inside the weird turning hearts that thrummed in things. Something in the woods is very strange. Some were just misgivings. They crept through her body, like the sourceless eggs that one wakes with. Others were more substantial. Now they seemed a thundering promise of doom. From the shadowy fringes of the lands we claim as our own, to the huddled homes all close, cramped and watchful, fears have begun to pull and fester, drowning good sense. In the wild black woods where birds once belled, a hateful silence churns. And it's Cthulhu! No, it's just, it's just a gorgon, isn't it? It's fine. A sudden startling pain lit Glenora's head. It subsided. For a moment she felt very blank. The story she'd written lay before her in luminous script, and more empty pages seemed to have sprouted up behind it. Why do I feel... powerful? Uh, we're gonna go with a spoon instead of a staff. Because uh, basically this is a choice between a wand or a staff. So uh, I like a wand because it gives her the other hand free. Which is jolly handy. <laughs> handy, because it's a hand. Open wide. Glurf. He's just uh, this rager here, this monster. He's just confused because uh, the the answer was actually who's there, but uh, we didn't say that. Uh, so this system, I love it. This is how wizards work in this game, essentially. Although they're mystics in this game. So interfusion. Yeah, get out of here. I will do the describing things. So, this is a really nice sort of uh, training room for this mechanic, because uh, it's a bit confusing, and, well, she's quite squishy. You don't want to get it killed. Um, but here, all of the terrain, all of these little scenery items, of which there are many in this game, and I absolutely love them, um, they all have different magic attached to them, like different spells that you can use using the, the item. So first, you interfuse with an item. So you can only interfuse with two. Um, items at a time by default and uh, so let's see here constrict that sounds good barrage uh, steel fire is pretty great or discus um, so it depends on what the the materials are so here you get discus and you get steel fire because it's stone so you get discus because you're throwing rocks from that or it's it counts as a lamp because it's, it's on fire, and you can steal fire from lamps, which is really cool. Uh, ropes will give you Constrict, because it's a textile, and so it goes by the materials, which is really cool, and they all give you different spells, which I think is amazing. I think it's absolutely cool. It's such a cool system. So uh, first off, we'll Constrict him, why not? He can't get to us anyway. This is this wall is completely impossible for him to get past. It just gives you this, like, free, you know, we can just attack him as many times as we want, because it's the sort of tutorial section. So here, we can attack him. So, Rage got attacked, been hobbled. Doesn't really matter, it's fine. Uh, we can even constrict him again. You can see this chest. You can see it's got a little health bar. Three out of four health. Every time we use it as a weapon, it's going to lose health. Which, again, really cool system for that. So, uh, let's also get the... Uh, tell you what, Splinter Blast is jolly handy. Let's do Splinter Blast, because Splinter Blast has a nice little additional effect. You can see on the little tile there showing the damage. Uh, so we've got 76% chance to hit him, 15% uh, chance of stunt, which is a critical hit, essentially. If you have elemental um, attacks, um, you have a chance of, like, if you attack someone with a fire weapon, the fire can spread to nearby enemies and things like that. It's very cool. But also, that little armor icon, that little shield icon that's broken, actually sunders the armor. And Splinter Blast can shred armor. So there you go. One less armor, and that means it's going to be one less damage reduction. So, jolly handy. Uh, let's also get some tools, shall we? We'll just we'll barrage him, shall we? Actually, you know what? I kind of want to set him on fire. We'll steal fire. Because stealing fire is wild. So, there we go. Messed him up. So, we got the stunt. So, we did plus one damage. And that's a victory. Good job, Clonora. And she got some experience. And now she's given her class. So we can pick additional things. So as a mystic, Lenora has acquired the knack for interfusing her spirit with earthly things, drawing on these bonds to enact formidable magics. Interesting. So, uh, naturalist. Advanced interfusion abilities for living matter. So trees and things like that. If we're outside, you know. 
humanist based on human artifice, instruments, and accidents. I'm not entirely sure what this actually gives us. Um, actually, I, I have no idea. Uh, soul splitting. When Glenora takes damage for each interfused object, one point is prevented and the object takes two damage instead. So, um, it means you can interfuse with things and they will take the damage for you. At least some of it. So, that's not too, too bad. But uh, I kind of want to be able to get additional um, sort of interfusion attacks because we'll be keeping a at a distance. So hopefully you won't get attacked at all if we're doing things right. So warding. So warding is like armor, but for magical attacks. So yeah, we'll give her give her one to put up to two warding, which would be jolly handy. So um, yep. So 19 years old and already fighting possessed boars. I grew up so fast. Did I just do that? I did. I felt the, you know, the something. And, and does this make me a mystic? Like old, musty Ashen who reconfigured the rivers? Glenora, you look good. You alright? Roshan, I'm glad you're safe. Man, glad you made it too. <laughs> Don't care if you're safe or not, but whatever. <laughs> you see that smoke? That's from Good Shovel. Yeah, that's Good Shovel. It's burning? How? Garu. I've been a little busy myself, actually. Would you two mind terribly if we... So I'm not sure if you've ever seen a... Uh, a monster? Sure we have. We slay monsters. Well, I do magic now, so... Okay, so here, um, after you scout a place out... Um, usually, scouting doesn't result in a fight, but it's the tutorial and it wanted to introduce Glenora. But um, after you've scouted an area, then... If there are enemies there, you have to fight the enemies to get the thing, you know, to get the the place for yourself. And uh, it just so happens that every tile has to be fought over because there's monsters everywhere. So let's do it. So here again, you pick who you want to uh, want to do it. But they're in the tile, so they're zero days away, so they can do it immediately. And uh, there's no waiting time to actually besiege the place. You've scouted the place already. Now you're literally just walking in and killing stuff. So let's do it. So all right. Let's talk about how we got, uh, how we get through this. And so, there's always events before you do an attack. Um, sometimes they're quite elaborate, actually. Um, sometimes they're quite simple. This one's fairly simple, but sometimes they're very elaborate. And what is lovely is all of those events will actually change how the battle goes. You'll get different sort of buffs and debuffs and things, depending on uh, different choices, and occasionally the odd dice roll. So, it's a really nice system. So, all right, let's talk about how we get through this. Um, we go offensive or defensive. Let's go offensive. What do we like before? If you're not the hunter, you're the prey. I think that's the sort of thing that these guys would um, would say. She's obviously unimpressed. You know, old uh, Glenora. Very unimpressed with these guys. But fair enough. No hero moves. Survival comes first. And here, all heroes get plus two damage and potency for three turns. Potency being uh, for magic, basically. Uh, so, courage. And that's because we picked, you know, let's... Be the hunter, not the prey. Um, and now Raccoon and Row Swarm are coming in. So the row we've seen before, the Raccoon is actually a missile um, enemy. So, scrambling through shadows, its barbed appendages eagerly twitch. Hooves thrown sloppily. Uh, sloppily. I, why can't I say sloppily? It just doesn't sound right. Sloppily around beneath it. It runs staggering, bellowing its agony. And yeah, action points. Fine. So, uh, here you can see uh, Interfuse. That's a free action, but you only get the action for free once. So yeah, Swift Action. Says says at the top. I'm actually pointing to it with my other hand, which I realised is very ineffective <laughs> for demonstrating things in a video. So this is the first video I've ever done. Yeah, it's not like there's a thousand of them on my channel already. But anyway, um, yeah, so there you go. Free action once. That's a Swift Action. Kind of like a bonus action in D&D, but you can do it more than once. Um, so that's fun. Uh, you can also attack scenery, which is a contextual thing, but, you know, we don't need to do that. Um, so, is there anything in here? There is the lamp, actually. So, that is something I will want to grab. Alright, tell you what. You move in here. So, because he's a warrior, he does get guardian. So, if anything comes within one space of him, he gets to attack it, which is awesome. So, she can run over here, interfuse with this lamp, so we can set people on fire. Well, enemies on fire. Not necessarily people. Um, I say not necessarily people. There aren't actually bandits in this game. There's no, there's no like human enemy. Uh, it's sort of like a, sort of a drow kind of thing. In fact, it's 
so much a kind of thing. There's actually a mod that turns the faction into drow, so... Anyway, that's Dark Elves for uh, the non-Dungeons and Dragons peoples. Uh, ow! Jerk. So also, um, these uh, the rangers get Silk Step, which allows them to go to the Grey Plain, which makes them hidden, which is kind of nice. And uh, I think it's a bonus damage or something. I rarely use it, because usually I'm busy doing this. Pew pew! Nice. And now, uh, could engage with him. Ah, uh, oh, we only get flare from the lamp. Well, well, we'll try and blind it. There we go, we blinded him. And uh, now let's uh, let's engage with it, I suppose. Does it do any damage? Uh, well, it's a free action once per turn, so we may as well do that. So we're engaged with it, and now we'll attack it. So if we don't kill it, it still has to attack Marn instead of someone else. So there we go. Victory. Rose Jin did get injured, but it's okay. It's okay. So, get some experience. Lovely. Okay, Greybark. Got tier 1 hunter armor. So, it lowers speed slightly, but it puts up armor by 2. What is nice is there's different kinds of armor. There's sort of um, different tiers of sort of light and heavy armor for every class. So, one will raise armor but lower speed, and one will put up dodge. Um, instead, which is kind of nice, so it, it lets you avoid the attack altogether. So, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice, there's sort of different ways of dealing with it. So, uh, here though, he's got tier 0 thing, so it's just this is just a nice upgrade. It puts dodge down a bit, puts speed down a bit, but armor going up substantially is well worth it, so let's do it. Also, we've got a pauldron of illumination, puts up stunt chance, so critical chance, basically. So, let's give that to... Uh, let's give that to Marn. Let's give that to Marn to get better stunts. And you see every item uh, that you equip gets added to the character, which is really cool. It's a really nice touch. Although that looks so elaborate compared to the rest of what he's wearing. But <laughs> oh well. Some dawns are grey that should be golden. The smell of ash embitters the taste of victory. No rain. I wish we'd get some rain. I've always looked for peace when I could, and I still do, but what chance is there for peace if we don't fight for it? What started here could be much bigger than us, so I was thinking, let's not wait to be overrun. Let's walk these lands, we'll learn how to fight, we'll send out word, a call for the able and strong, and we'll name this company of heroes the Spider Heralds, or the Sheath of Vivrel, or the Owls of the Labyrinth, or we can enter our own name. Um. I kind of like Spider Heralds, so I'm going to go with Spider Heralds, guys. It makes it sound like we're going to bring a bunch of spiders, which is just not useful to anyone. Um, you know, hey guys, we're heroes. Here's some spiders. Um, it's just silly. It's very silly. So, um, I imagine that'll be that. I imagine it'll be dangerous. Wonders in uh, wonders in the wilderness, jewels on drawbridges, romance among the ruins. I am that man. I'll do it. Not for anyone else, though. For you. Here follow the tales of the Spider Heralds. Be remembered. Calamities. So every time we do a battle. I know, it's not been every time because it's the tutorial. That was like a proper battle that we just did um, to actually like take over an area. Um, a calamity happens. So the whatever sort of enemy you attacked, it gets uh, sort of a, a bonus added to its deck. It could be a new sort of enemy, or it could be something that augments um, the enemy. So, anyway, a new card is added to the Gorgon deck. The deck is more dangerous now. So this enemy type has been added to the deck, so in these random encounters, there's a chance of seeing this guy. Um, I know we've seen him already, but that's because that was a scripted thing. Don't worry about it. So, let's finish that. And this is the different deck. So here you can see these are the different enemy types. And one is always blank. There's always four out of five, so that way there's always something that you might not have bumped into in a while, which is kind of nice. And uh, every campaign will focus primarily on a single, um, you know, enemy type. And this one is Gorgons, is the main enemy type for this campaign. So it helps mix things up, you know. You can change the enemy types for each campaign you play. And yeah, keeps it keeps it fresh. I rather like it. And uh, honestly, it makes sense for a campaign. Because any, any sort of role-playing campaign you do, there's usually a big bad faction. And then the rest is just for the sake of variety, really, isn't it? So. So now we can actually secure Grand Border's Boast, which <laughs> gets us legacy points. Thank you. Um, so legacy points you can get by taking new sites. Um, your company gets legacy points from taking new sites. You can spend them to do the following things. 
recruit heroes. As you can see, there's an icon in uh, Good Shovel already to recruit a new hero. Build new stations, which you get resources from. Uh, or you can cancel calamities and incursions. So certain times when calamities pop up, um, you can choose to spend points to block them, stop them appearing. And uh, incursions are basically invasions, which are uh, just another fight, basically, that you can actually prepare for. Which I'm sure we'll get to. But uh, it's all good fun. So, securing sites. We can now do that. But, first, I want to go into who our characters are, because we haven't gone into their histories yet. So, uh, let's actually start with uh, with our leader, our brave leader, Marn. I'm assuming he's the leader. He's the warrior. Makes sense, right? So, although he could be the dummy, and, you know, could be the Gandalf. Sorry, Glenora is the leader. We'll find out. But anyway, uh, so relationships, it will actually say different relationships with people. So you can see with Rosjin uh, Eldwatch here, Irritant. This is his rival score. So when your rival stunts, you get plus 35% chance to stunt until you successfully stunt. So essentially, if your rival does something really impressive, you want to one-up him, <laughs> which is really fun. And every relationship will give you different bonuses, which, again, really cool to see. Um, really changes the dynamic of... Uh, you know, of the different fights. It's really cool. So, let's have a look at his history. If he wasn't reading something as a boy, then folks who knew Mon claimed he was most likely sleeping, eating, or dead. A young woman near Tim Spike Oddery taught him how to tell one firm fern from another. Villages unspoiled found protection under his vigilance. And it gives you his uh, legacy, so that legacy will actually um, go sort of... Uh, you'll just get more and more entries the more campaigns you run with them. Um, they could even die of old age, and then you bring them back in again. Um, it's almost like some sort of rebirth thing going on. It's very odd. And also, you see the different hooks here. So this will actually trigger different events because of these different hooks, which is very cool. So, love that. Uh, Roshjin Eldwatch, a, the poetical romantic. 23 years old, Roshjin remembered perpetual rains over his hometown and often the close, cruel bark of wild things, but somehow the people there were happier than anywhere else. A rough, strong beast hunter took him under her wing, taught Roshjin all she knew about seeking dangerous prey, also something of the passion of lonesome people. Often caught making and breaking promises, he nevertheless vowed to protect all winsome women from harm. <laughs> Fair enough. And then Glenora, finally, a uh, level 1 mystic. Uh, age 19, the chanting orchard seemed one morning to speak thrice. Glenora, Glenora, Glenora! said the orchard. Two weeks later, a child was born. This runic name, a birthmark on her shoulder. Forced to seek dangerous work in order to survive, she grew comfortable among crags and critters. Embers of old legend kindled her spirit. She strode blazing towards glory. So, love to see this stuff. Um, I love that there are these little, you know, things that you can look into. Um, it's really lovely. There's just so much, so many little stats and things you can look at. And what is lovely, uh, again, he's got a... <laughs> She's got a crush on Rosjin. Got a crush. So, plus one damage against enemies who have attacked Rosjin till the end of the mission. Actually, we didn't look at... Uh, here we go. There's a rivalry and a crush for him. So he gets plenty of bonuses, which is very cool. So it gives you, uh, you know, a list of everything in this game. It's just beautiful. You can see all these different things on different screens. Like, aspects are really cool. So, um, you know, it tells you what is giving you different bonuses. So, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. I just I love how all this is presented. It's wonderful. So, uh, this is where we're going to leave it for today. Um, so, we've met our characters. We've met our cast. We're going to meet someone else um, pretty soon. But not before we, we take this area for, um, for the village. And hopefully, hopefully, it'll help us fight off um, more of the Gorgons. Because there's plenty of land left to explore. And uh, plenty more Gorgons we're going to have to fight through. And possibly some other monsters too. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, I enjoy the hell out of this game. I will be playing, um, hopefully, doing the entirety of um, at least the uh, like tutorial campaign. There's three chapters. And, I mean, it's it's going to be a good number of hours just for the tutorial campaign. So there'll be plenty of content. But if people really enjoy it, then I'll probably do some other campaigns too. Uh, we'll see how it goes, though. You know, no promises yet. That's just YouTube's fickle. So I can't make big promises because it... If there's only three people watching it, it's just not worth my time. You know, I'm neglecting other people who want to see other things on the channel. So what can I do? So guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.